Hello and welcome to Flow Shop. My name is Joseph. In this tutorial, I'm just going to go um, straight into showing how I like to do my um, frequency separation, what I look out for, like how much separation needs to be done, and what to look out for when um, you're doing frequency separation. And this is my way, but this just shows how I like to do it and what I am looking out for. So, um, zooming, in, zooming into the image, um, I'm just going to create a new layer and so we can identify the things I'm looking out for. And so immediately I can tell um, the makeup wasn't properly done and this was because of the tutorial I wanted to show how we can correct all these things, although it's always advisable to get everything perfect in camera and so the male artist should have done a better job of blending but for the video purpose um wanted to make it a little bit more imperfect and so by the time that we're done with this whole series we would have been able to transform the image from how ordinary it was to a very polished look and feel um so I know I need to, I'm going to be blending this area right here. I'm going to fill in the lipstick, but we'll be dealing with the lips in a separate tutorial. And so I wouldn't go into details in, in, in this current video. Um, we're going to need to clear this, clear the lines, clear this on her forehead. Um, find a way to reduce the baby hair on her face uh, same thing around here we also have to remove all these strands in here and so yeah you get the idea for what we're looking out for just taking out the small um, imperfections in the image and believe me it's these little things these little changes, these, uh, yeah, these little changes that you make that's gonna make your image pop at the end. Um, so if you have the time, just make sure you go uh, deep into your image and make all the little adjustments that you can make in pieces as well. Just gonna get rid of that layer, and I'm gonna start it off. So. Um, we already in the previous tutorial um, this is where the image was and we moved it a little bit to the side so I'm gonna get rid of the layer below because we don't need it anymore and I'm gonna rename this to background or BG so I know I'm not gonna touch this I'm just gonna make two copies by hitting command or control J twice and this is going to make two copies of my background layer. I'm going to rename this to LF, which is low frequency. And I'm going to rename this to HF, which is high frequency. Well, let me just add texture. So HF slash texture. So I know I have my textures on that. LF slash tone. So I know I have my color tones on that layer. Now we need to find a way of blending because right now in my, when I make the texture layer visible and invisible, we don't see any change. And that's because we have a direct copy of the low frequency on the high frequency. And now we need to separate the two. We need to be able to pull all the textures on one layer, which is the HF, and we need to pull all of the color information onto the layer below, which is the LF. All right, so first of all, I need to smoothing out um, this LF layer and that's gonna take all the texture information out of it. And how much smoothing needs to be done? Uh, basically, it's, it's up to you and what you are correcting. And for me, I'm just gonna, because for the sake of the video, 
I want to keep it as short as possible and so I'm just gonna go for a blanket blur which I would be using throughout um, we should be able to correct majority of the problems in the image I'm gonna go to filter blur and normally we use Gaussian blur but I'm gonna go to noise and dust and scratches All right, and I'm, I need to be sure that so when you click any area for example when I click on the eye that is what shows in the box here when I click on the hair that's what shows and so it, the box is essentially showing um, area wherever you click in the image and so you can determine how much blur you want um, in your image so I'm gonna be looking right around here or yes there and I can see there are lots of there's still some texture information here this, when you click and drag inside the box you get to see it before and you get to see it an after you can also use the preview button to see it directly on the image um, so by unchecking preview this is how the image is check and preview shows how much play we've added and we can st we still have some information in there but I don't want to do that so I need to make sure I have blur this as much as possible so I'm just going to increase my radius up um, fairly well but I also need to be sure I'm not really distorting any of the major details in the face I'm just going to up it just a little it's about 20 and I think I'm okay with this and so this can serve as the base for me to start my retouch in my um, frequency separation. So I'm just gonna hit OK noticing I use 20 pixels it's gonna hit OK I'm gonna make my texture layer visible now I'm gonna go to image apply image and this image is already in 8-bit and so I know that I know my settings are gonna be different from a 16 bit. So I'm gonna go to my LF tones. Then I'm gonna go to subtract, scale to offset 128 and just hit OK. So that has put the textures, and you can see we don't have color information on here, it's just the textures like the hair, the eyelashes, and all the pores on the face. Then I'm gonna change the blending mode of the texture layer, so make sure it's selected to linear light. And that's gonna put everything back to how it was. And so I'm just gonna group these and that is our frequency separation. I'm going to rename the group to frequency separation. Okay. Now let's let's deal with the textures first, and then we'll get on to the um, to the tones. So opening my group, zooming in a little bit, I'm going to use my healing brush, uncheck sample layers, and I'm just going to click and drag. And it's not really doing it the way I want it to. Let me check proximity march. I think proximity match is doing a much better job. And this is how it's going to be if you're using your spot healing brush. You can also use your healing brush so you can sample the area where you want. Make sure I set the current layer. And I can sample and paint over. So I'm just going to be sampling the good areas and painting over. Um, the areas that I want to correct. And because it's a beauty image, 
we need to be as patient as possible and then go through the image. Um, over here it's not really working so I'm just going to go to my clone stamp too. Make sure that it's also set to current layer. Sample and I'm just going to paint over it. There's a color change, there's a color difference between here and there, and we can correct that on the low frequency layer. But before that, let me just do a quick before and after, and you can tell that we are correcting the textures on this image. Just gonna stick to my clone stamp tool for now. I'm just gonna go quickly through this. I don't wanna have any repeating patterns as well. So if any area immediately looks like it's repeating, I'm just going to sample from a different area and cover that. Okay, so I didn't want you to be bored, and that's how come I had to um, forward the um, um, the healing area uh, when I was cloning and healing the hair strands on the face. Um, basically, how I started is the same thing I've been going over and over and over um, to get to the stage, and so I'm just gonna do a quick before where we can see the. Um, the mark on the forehead and the hair strands on the face and all that and after where I've been able to clean all of those uh, fairly well I didn't want to get rid of all the baby hair because I mean we do have baby hair I just wanted to make it a little bit realistic so now that we're done with the texture layer the next thing to do is to blend the color tones in the image and so I'm gonna hide my texture layer briefly and we can tell already that there are a lot of tonal variations in the image and we can't correct all of that um, on this on this um, layer we'll be creating several layers in between the high frequency and the low frequency where we can be painting and adjusting and color toning um, essentially <laughs> remaking it up um, ourselves so first i'd like to create a new layer in between hit b for my brush tool make it fairly bigger and make sure it's soft bring my flow down to about two percent and without making my texture layer visible i just want to make sure my tonal transitions are as smooth as possible so I'm going to sample and already I know that I need to cover this up uh, quite a bit. This is not really, uh, I'm not really doing this to um, to get a very perfect image right now. I'm just doing this and so I can even out all the tonal variations that immediately stand out. So I'm going to create a new layer in between um, again and I'm just going to go over the painting um, a little bit more just to 
even out the tonal variations still. Uh, let me just create the curves adjustment layer. I feel the face is brighter than like a tad bit, so I'm just gonna bring it down just just a little, and I'm gonna hit Command or Control I to invert the layer mask, and then I'm gonna paint with white. To reveal it to just where the face is and leaving out the eyes anyway. I don't want to darken down the eyes. So the face and the neck match just a little bit more. You can tell here it was brighter, but now smashing up with the rest of the body a little bit and even that also helps uh, blending the makeup a little bit more so what I'm gonna do again is I'm just gonna create another frequency separation layer and you can create as many as you want and use them to tackle specific areas in the in the image so specific problem areas in the image uh, I'm gonna create a stamp visible of everything I've done. So Shift, Option, or Alt, Command or Control, and then E. That's gonna create a stamp visible layer. Again, I'm gonna make a copy of it. I'm gonna hide the top layer. Uh, I'm gonna blur. This is I'm gonna use Gaussian blur. So filter blur, Gaussian blur. I'm going to do a preview to see how much blur um, and my problem area is around here so I just want to be sure the blending and I can see this area is very uneven and yeah well let me take it back again to 12 12 is just okay then we're gonna come to the top layer, make it visible, go to image, apply image, and the previous settings I used still stand. So I'm just gonna rename this to tones and rename this to texture. Even though we already know what it is, I'm just gonna create a layer in between the two of them. And now I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit and make sure that I'm correcting these areas um, a little bit more, both on the texture and on the layer too. So I'm gonna hit Clone Stamp Tool, S for the Clone Stamp Tool. I'm just gonna. And I think we've done a very decent job. When I hit Alt or Option, click on my BG layer. This is how the image was when we started. And this is how far we've been able to bring it. We've been able to match the skin tones of the face and the neck a little bit more. And we've blended uh, the makeup issues as well. So yeah, uh, this is how far you can go with frequency separation. I kind of like it here, but um, I think I'm still gonna add another 
curves adjustment and maybe darken down the whole image as well. Just gonna bring it down a notch. Yeah, and I, I think I kinda like it this way. It's a little too saturated. So I'm just gonna This is how I like to desaturate my images a little bit. I'm gonna go to black and white adjustment layer and I'm just gonna set the opacity to 10%. And I find that makes the colors in the image settle a little bit more. If it's too much, I can always bring it down to about 6 or 7%. Let me set it to five. Much better. Okay, so there we have it. We've been able to. Um, we've been able to apply frequency separation to the image, and we've been able to do a lot of correcting of the makeup and the color tones in the image. And so, a quick run through. This is um, how the image started. Uh, we had problem areas here, this dark line there. We had hair strands um, running down across, an imperfection here and on the forehead, uh, baby hair all over and some dark patch over here as well. So we created the very first frequency separation and we used that to create a base. We used that to correct majority of the problem areas in the image and we created a curves adjustment on top of that which darkened down um, the face. We created a mask and then we painted the face out and so we were able to darken down the face just so we could match with the neck a little bit. We created another frequency separation and we used that to go a little deeper into the image and then take care of even um, more uneven areas uh, patchy areas in the in the face and and this is how that this is how far that brought us and then we did a little bit of um, darkening and we settled in the colors with a black and white adjustment layer so uh, thank you very much if you did like this tutorial if you did like this video and you want to see more give me a thumbs up like it comment share if you have any idea of any uh, video you want me to do on retouching photography anything just let me know in the comments down below and I'll surely do them I hope you had a nice time watching this and we're gonna continue um, retouching this image in our upcoming videos thank you very much and see you next week Bye-bye.